So now we've got a good understanding of what selections are, I'm going to show you a couple of more advanced tools for making selections and some of the things you can do with them. So we've covered our rectangular marquee tool and our lasso tool, which conceptually just make simple selections. Below those, uh, you've got a couple of other options here. Uh, one I like to work with a lot, the quick selection tool. If you look at this photo we've got here, what I might wanna do here is work with this little girl who's running and say I just wanted to move her in the photo. I wanna make a selection, so how do I do that? In this case, if I go to the lasso tool and start trying to you know, draw around here, I'm gonna do a really, really bad job. Now I can zoom in, this is 100% on this photo. And again, you know, it's, it's too hard a job to work with the lasso tool and try and accurately trace around um, her edges. So one tool you've got here is this quick select. And what this does is effectively let you paint on an area where there is sufficient contrast between the object you're trying to select, in this case a person, and the background around it, such that Photoshop can kind of figure out where the edges are. It's only gonna work as well as where, you, where your eye can see a pretty clear change in color or dark and lightness, and then Photoshop's gonna be able to figure out where the edges are. So you can work around with this as I'm doing here. You can see I'm clicking and dragging uh, and it's just building up this selection. So I can keep letting go and work all the way around her body here. This is actually working out pretty well. Sometimes it doesn't. You can see here it started to select part of the sand. So this is an area where the color of her skin, the lightness of her skin and the sand are too close. So Photoshop hasn't been able to figure out where it should uh, stop the selection. I'm gonna leave that, we'll come back to that in a second. I'm gonna come over here, go to her foot, come up her leg there, and apart from that area over with her other foot, oh, I'm gonna undo that. Um, it's not done a bad job. We've got the hair here, that's a little bit of a problem. But yeah, this is done an okay job of creating a selection around this little girl. Now, when you're using the quick selection tool here, uh, similar to when we looked at the zoom tool, you'll notice the cursor has a little plus in it. If I hold down Alt or Option on Mac, you can see it changes to a minus. What that will enable me to do is paint again on the selection, but this time it will take stuff away. When you have this type of problem where it selected part of the beach, which we don't want, Quick Select's pretty good at sort of figuring out its mistakes. So if I hold the Alt key down and just paint back over those little areas where it went into the beach and the sea, you can see it's sort of cleaned it up and it's worked out, you know, where, where the selection should really be. So I might just come down here, get the rest of a foot, hold Alt down, just get that bit. And that's an okay selection. It's not gonna be perfect. There's other things I would do to work with a selection like this to get it a bit more refined. But for the time being, this is good enough as a demo of what Quick Select does. So with that done, we're working on a photo layer, just one photo. What I'm gonna do is cut her out. So much the same as if you were cutting text out of a Word document, uh, you can press Control or Command X on your keyboard, or if you prefer, you can go up to the Edit menu and you've got cut, cut, cut copy, and paste up here. And now if I do Paste, Control V, you can see that's pasted what I've cut out with that selection on a new layer. So our, our original photo is here and we've got a new layer with the girl on it. Notice the checkerboard around it means what it's pasted is just what we cut out of the selection. If I isolate that holding Alt and clicking on the visibility, you can see that's cut her out and everything around her is transparent. So now I can use my move tool, which is top of the toolbar over here on the left. Go to that and I can click and drag on the layout. So this is another concept we haven't covered yet either. You can move the layers around. Well, you can move the contents of the layers around. I'm gonna zoom out, control minus. So we've moved the girl around just by clicking and dragging on her. Could do the same with the photo. So I could click, click down to the photo layer 
and actually move that around if I wanted to. Obviously, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to undo that. But we've got our little girl over here. So I can move her down there if I want. And then if I wanted to clean this up, I could go back to the lasso tool, get on my photo layer, and draw a, lasso, draw a lasso around the area where we cut her out and try and run that content aware fill again to see if it will patch up where we've cut her out. I suspect Photoshop isn't quite clever enough to do a good job with this, but we'll give it, we'll give it a go uh, just to see how we go. Notice at this point, I've got to start being careful because I've got to start thinking about which layer am I running these effects and these uh, processes on. So when you work with selections, selections don't really apply until you choose a layer over here in the layer panel. So you've always got to keep an eye over here and, and look at what your active layer is. Because if I had the girl layer selected and I tried to do a fill, it would fill on the girl layer, not the photo layer. So I want to click on the photo layer and then I can go back to edit, fill, choose content aware, click OK and we'll see what happens. Not a bad job. So we've still got our selection on screen. I can do deselect, control D, and there you go. So we've used the lasso tool to fill in that cutout area we left, and we used the quick selection tool to get a nice, quick, easy selection around her as an object that we could then cut out and put on a separate layer. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.